Hey everyone, it's Jennifer with Rooted in the Rock and I've got something dropping from the Travel Branch right now. Hey everyone, welcome to Rooted in the Rock. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to try to keep it short today because I know the last one was super, super, super long, but there was so much information to share. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience eating wheat-free and soy-free at Disney World. Now, this is sort of a new thing with me. I've eaten gluten-free before here and there for different things. Never, though, more than three weeks or so, usually. So, but now this is like, you know, I had some tests done and it's wheat protein that I'm supposedly allergic to and soy. So, which I was supposed to avoid anyway. So, mm, but now I like have to do it and like forever. So this was our first time traveling to Disney World and having to like really having to eat wheat and soy free. So I, I've had a lot of friends that have wondered here, you know, they've wondered, well, what's Disney like eating with allergies? Because I imagine you can't have anything. But one of the great things about Disney, Disney is very, what do you want to, what do you want to, I don't know what you want to call it, food, not food centric, but Disney is real big on food and snacks and things like that. That's just, it's a thing. It's a whole thing by itself at Disney World. Some people go to Disney, don't even write anything. They just go to eat. That's it. So what a lot of people don't realize is that Disney is very, very, very allergy friendly. They're, you know, it's all about their customers, right? They're very customer service oriented and they try to make sure there is something for everyone because nobody wants to go you go to the magic, most magical place on earth with your family, but you can't eat anything like that would be, <laughs> that would be horrible. And well, you just wouldn't go and they'd rather you come and spend your money. So, <laughs> you know, so yeah, so this is my experience. We, I'll, I'll talk about some of the particular places, but in, in general, in general, pretty much every table service restaurant, if you go to a table service restaurant they have some kind of allergy friendly options. They will bring the chef, one of the chefs, I'm, I'm assuming one of the chefs, but they will bring the chef out to your table. They will talk to you about what your allergies are, what you can have. And if there's nothing on the menu that they can, you know, modify or this or that, then they'll make something just for you back in the kitchen. It is so nice. And, and it was, you know, and in the beginning, here's the thing, like in the beginning, because this, this was new for me, when we went, it had only been, it might have only been a couple weeks since I had started this new new thing. So, or since, I don't know what to call it, <laughs> began this journey or whatever. And so it was still kind of new and I felt really like in the beginning, I felt really like, oh, don't, you know, don't go to a bunch of trouble, you know, oh gosh, bringing the chef out, it's so embarrassing and, and oh, I don't want to ask him for, you know, I try, I don't, I'm one of those people that I don't like to, you know, ask for special treatment or I'm not demanding. I try to work with what's there and not be any trouble. So you know, the first couple times they brought the chef out, I was just like, oh, sorry, you know, but they're, they're so nice about it. They're so nice about it. And at table service restaurants, I think it's a rule. Like if they find out you have, you know, allergies that, you know, you really have to watch out for, they will, they make sure they bring the chef out to talk to you. Even if you say, well, I don't really need to talk to the chef, they'll still bring them anyway, just to make sure. And so, with me, the wheat is the allergy allergy. Soy is that is one too, but at this but it but it's um it's not as bad as the wheat. It's more of a you need to avoid it if at all possible kind of. It's not like a none of mine are like, you know, I've lived with wheat and soy my whole life. So none of them are like a EpiPen go to the hospital kind of allergy, but it's been causing this inflammation that has stayed around. So I have to cut it out. I have to get it out of my system and I have to avoid it if I can. So the soy is, you know, I, I talked to 
my, you know, my health person about it. And, and I said, you know, if I have to make a choice and only, you know, if I can only avoid one and I can't avoid both, the soy was the one where it was like, you know, avoid it if you can, but you know, if you got to have some, you got to have some. So, but if you try to tell, listen to me, <laughs> if you go to Disney and you tell, like you're talking to the chef or you talk to the server and you're like, you know, you know, might you tell them your allergy, my allergies are wheat and soy. And, you know, if you tell them that, they will hold you to it. Like if you try to fudge and say, well, I can have a little bit, you know, this one, uh-uh, that not having it. Like if you tell them the, uh, when we were at 50s prime time, the, our server there, he was, they're really, I tell you at 50s prime time, it, it's a big deal, like how the servers act, you know, you're at mama's house and you gotta keep your elbows off the table and you know, all those things. And it's a lot of fun. And the last couple of years with the pandemic, it hasn't been so much like that, but boy, this guy, I was like, Ooh, they're back to it. Aren't they? Like he was really legit, like family on my tushy, like, no, uh, you can't have, <laughs> he was so, he would, they, I tell you these server, if you tell them you have that allergy, you can't fudge it. They won't, <laughs> they're not going to let you have any of that. And it's good because they actually, I appreciated it because they made me behave when I would have fudged a bunch of things just because like to not be trouble or to, you know, whatever, because I tell you, soy is in so many things. You basically can't have anything chocolate because there's soy less than in pretty much everything chocolate, unless it's specially made without it. So, whew, so desserts were very minimal, but anyway, so, but anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to convey is the servers, the chefs, everybody at the, at the restaurant, especially table service, they are on top of like, if you tell them when you sign in and register for your, you know, reservation or whatever, when you check in for your, and they ask for allergies and you tell them the allergies, they make sure you, you know, they are very, very helpful getting you what you need. So if they don't have it, you know, most of them have a, an allergy menu and it lists all, you know, all the things they have that are allergy friendly, but you got to look because there are tons of different allergies. So you have to look and see, depending, some of the menus weren't all exactly structured the same, but generally they have the food item, they list, you know, the food item, what's in it, just like a regular menu, but then underneath, it tells you the allergies that it's good for. Like, there's no eggs, or there's no this or that, the other, it, it lists them. So you have to kind of look item by item and check, you know, to make sure. Because some things are good for multiple allergies, some things were designed, they're just, they're just good for one thing in particular. So, but almost every table service menu, there's either an allergy menu, or they'll bring the chef out, they'll talk to you, and they'll figure something out for you. The, the one place, one of the places, I'll just try to go through the most memorable ones, because I'm trying to keep this short. We could sit and talk about, we could probably do... A video on each restaurant individually. <laughs> there is so much. There's so much at Disney and there's so many restaurants. It's crazy. But it's good because you're there all day and you got to eat. So, and I was so thankful that they had allergy friendly food because, you know, you go all day and you're hungry. And this was, like I said, I'd only been into it for a couple of weeks. So, and when you first go like gluten-free and all that you can like have withdrawal and be really upset about not being able to have your wheat things and stuff so I was so thankful that Disney had plenty of things that I could eat that were safe and and all of that so Liberty Tree Tavern we that's in Magic Kingdom in Liberty Square, in Liberty Tree Tavern, we had eaten there. It's family style, so they bring bowls of the, the things and everybody, you know, does up their own plate. And we hadn't eaten there for a while. We had eaten there before and we were like, yeah, it's good. Well, this time, it's like one of my new favorites <laughs> because allergy-wise, oh, the food was so good. I got my own. So there's like soy, I think, in the roast beef sauce and stuff like that, but they have gluten-free dinner rolls. They're tapioca-based, I believe, 
but they were they were good like stuff you know most of the time when you're gluten free the rice is the number one alternative and rice doesn't make very good bread honestly it's not chewy it's not it's 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 usually crumbly you know so like the gluten free buns right like we were at the Edison and I think no I think they told me none of their stuff has soy and they had a gluten free anywhere that has hamburgers usually they'll have a gluten free bun that you can have and but this one it was the standard it seemed like it was the same at all the places but it was crumbly which I you know it looked like okay so here we have there's a fast food restaurant called Culver's they have a gluten free bun there and but one of the things with that theirs they like there's a certain way I don't know how they do it but they heat it and steam it in the package it's not crumbly when you eat the ones at Disney were not I don't think they got warmed up or steamed or whatever I don't know what Culver's does to them but they turn out great it looked exactly the same they looked like the same bun it was probably the Udi's but um, it was always like dry and crumbly so it's hard to eat you might as well just say no bun and eat it with a knife and fork but Liberty Tree Tavern, they had those dinner rolls that were so good. I got my own plate. It had turkey and the green beans and the mashed potatoes. Oh, the mashed potatoes were so good. And when you're like hungry and you can't eat anything you want, when you get food you can have, it's like, ah, so good. And, but they, Liberty Tree Tavern, one of the things they serve is stuffing. They have a gluten-free stuffing. I think it's made out of those dinner rolls. The gluten-free dinner rolls that they have but but with the gravy and all the stuff that was mixed into it it was so good and liberty tree has a gluten-free dessert it's like this apple cake it was okay but it was probably one of the only times i was able to get dessert at the restaurant because they usually all involve chocolate of some kind which i couldn't have because of the soy so if you're checking in, so there's a note. If you're checking in and you're like, I can't have soy, or if there's something that you're avoiding but you don't necessarily have to avoid, you maybe don't mark it when you check in. Because if you say that's an allergy, they ain't gonna let you have anything with that. So if you plant, if you know, if it's one of those things that you can fudge here and there, maybe don't mark it as an allergy. <laughs> I mean, it, technically, it's supposed to be with me, but it, like I said, like if I have, you know, some here and there, it's prob, you know, it's okay. But anyway, so Liberty Tri Tree Tavern ended up one of my favorites. Oh, Ronto Roasters. So in Hollywood Studios, there is in um, Galaxy's Edge, there's this little quick service called Ronto Roasters. They have these sausage wrap things. They're so good. Well, a lot of people don't know, they have a breakfast wrap where it's the sausage and cheese, um, eggs and cheese and whatever in like the pita wrap or whatever. It was so good. But if you can't have wheat, you can't have that wrap. They have, I thought, oh, there's surely they're not going to have something for me. They have, it's, I don't know what it is. I've got a picture of it. I'll show you. They have this, it's a gluten, some kind of gluten free kind of tortilla wrap pita replacement I don't know it's it's kind of thin kind of kind of dry but but I was able to have the breakfast ronto wrap and it was so good ah oh, so good guys I don't know what that sauce is there's some kind of sauce that they put on it it's really really good so that was amazing to be able to have sci-fi drying dine in was was great we had a really interesting server and the, the chef was great. The salad there, I was really surprised. So this is also in Hollywood at Sci-Fi Dine-In, Drive-In, sorry. Um, at Sci-Fi Drive-In, it was this, I was, at first I was disappointed because there was not much, not a whole lot of choices, but I got, ended up getting this grilled chicken salad. And you know, when you're on vacation, you don't want to eat good healthy salads, right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat all the fun things. So I was kind of like, oh, I guess I'll get the salad. So I got the salad. But the salad, it had, I think it was feta cheese, which I don't like a lot of, but it was feta cheese. 
and it, I think it had like the mandarin orange slices and want these really good like candied I think they were pecans uh, and grilled chicken and it actually was really really good I really enjoyed that another salad that was awesome that I wasn't happy about at first, we we ended up getting into Space 220, which we've never, that was our first time, we'd never gotten in there before, and we just happened, that'll be another time I'll have to tell you about how to score reservations, but we scored that day of, like, an hour or two before. Someone must have canceled, and we snapped, snapped that up, and because we'd never been there before, we wanted to see it. It's crazy expensive really 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 expensive but it's really neat so if you want to splurge and you know anyway so the chef came out and we we talked there but the side the appetizer I did was this salad and I was like oh boy the only appetizer I can have is the salad bah, this sucks you know like <laughs> I tell I tell you it was you know when I first started doing this and you know in the beginning it's hard and you you're just like you know, you got to have a while to lament the fact that you can't have all your favorite things anymore. But anyway, so this salad, it was, I thought it said bib lettuce, but I'm assuming it was one of those, you know, the Disney World actually grows a lot of their own um, produce in their greenhouses and things, you know, you do living with the land and you see the things and they do actually use that food in a lot of their restaurants. I don't know if... That lettuce at Space 220 came from their garden or somewhere else, but that was the best lettuce I think I've ever had. <laughs> I don't know why, but wow, that, it was just a, you know, a little basic appetizer salad, but it was so good. Uh, that lettuce was amazing. It was fantastic. Oh, and I, so there I got the burger and the potatoes. That one, the bun like completely fell apart. It was really frustrating. I couldn't eat the burger properly. I just had to eat it with a knife and fork. I mean, it was still really good, but the bun was useless. But it came with these giant potato wedges. It was the, the potato, it had to be one of those potatoes that was like this long, like as long as your head, like they were huge and they were really good. It was The food there was really, really good. So yes, it's like, stupid expensive but it everybody who thinks it would be neat should at least get to do it one time because like the elevator um in and out elevator I don't know if it actually goes up and down but the elevator in and out and the theming and the window it's just a really really neat place especially if you if you like space at all it's fantastic um figments so I'm still in Epcot sorry that's an Epcot in Epcot, at the time we're there, it was the Arts Festival of the Arts. And you know Epcot, there's always some kind of festival going on and they have food booths and things. Figments was, we love, I love dragons and purple and Figment is a purple dragon. So he's one of my favorites, right? Fig, they have a, for the Arts Festival, they have a whole entire, it's a booth, but it's really in a little building. And where the, it used to have the video screen around the room thing in there. And now it's like a restaurant event space or whatever. But Figments was in there. And they have this grape, this little grape slushy smoothie thing. Grape smoothie, I think is what they were calling it. And I had seen it. Like I watched Disney Food Blog and some of these. Disney Food Blog is amazing, by the way. Um, I had seen it. And my, my girls love Molly from Mammoth Club too. So I, I had seen them talk about this grape smoothie and they talked, oh, it's so, it tastes like medicine. It's fake grape, you know, it's gross. But I was like, I really want the little cup it comes in because <laughs> you get to keep the cup and it's so cute. So we ended up, we wanted to, just as a family, we got one of each thing and we were all trying all the things. And I tell you, I loved, I don't know why, <laughs> loved that grape smoothie like nobody else maybe one of our kids liked it too but everyone else hated it I loved it <laughs> which is crazy and it had these freeze-dried skittles on top those were so good those are 
fun to eat. I don't know if they did it themselves or if there's a way to buy those somehow, but those were awesome. And the other, you know, very allergy friendly thing was called fruit pizza. And when we think fruit pizza, we think cookie, cream cheese, and fruit on top. Their version of fruit pizza was a slice of watermelon that looked kind of like, you know, a pizza slice. And then there was stuff on top of it. Like, I think, I don't know, balsamic and some herbs. And I love balsamic, so I was like, ooh, yay. But I didn't like it at all, which is weird. I thought for sure I'd hate the grape smoothie and like the fruit pizza, but it was opposite. I loved the the grape smoothie and I hated the I hated the fruit pizza. Everybody else liked it. Uh, well, no. No, most of us didn't really like that one. And then... <sighs> So this is going longer and longer. I'm going to try to cut it. So Yak and Yeti, that one is an animal kingdom. That one has, that's one of those restaurants that it's actually not run by Disney. It's run by a restaurant company, but they have tons of really great food. However, it is in a, the Asia section of Animal Kingdom and anything Asian has soy in it. So that one, I actually... I don't know if it was because I was tired or what, but I actually like cried a little <laughs> sitting at the table because I knew I couldn't have anything. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to, I'm a grilled chicken and plain rice. Like that's what I'm going to be able to have because they're like literally nothing. Everything had soy or something in it that I couldn't have. So the chef came out and I said, you know, you're going to have to help me because as far as I can tell, the only thing I can have is grilled chicken and plain rice. And he was like, well, pretty much. <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, even the chef. But when my food came out, I had this huge plate. There was the grilled chicken, there was the rice, and then he made me this huge mass of grilled vegetables. So like he made sure that I had plenty of food to eat. Like it was more, definitely more that I can eat, which most of the time, the servings there are more than you can eat anywhere you go. But like he made sure that I had plenty and that I would be satisfied and, and had enough and, and all of that. So they were really, really, and the server was like super nice and cause she could see that I was kind of upset and um, they were, they were really nice, you know, to work with me and help me feel better about that. So that one, it's really great. We love that restaurant. If if you're allergic to soy, that one's hard. Like they will make you something. They'll make sure you have food. But, you know, the normal choices, <laughs> Asian food, pretty much none. Like wheat, you, can, you can't have any of your noodles, any of your breaded stuff. Like, and I love udon noodles. Ugh. Anyway, so, and the, another one that I was, well, I wasn't necessarily, well, I was kind of disappointed at Yak and Yeti, but what can you do? It's Asian, right? soy sauce and everything so the one that I was actually disappointed with was Be Our Guest which is kind of shocking because we love Be Our Guest the filet there is amazing and Be Our Guest is usually it's really really good but they really didn't have option wise that one didn't really and that one I don't think I talked to a chef at that one. We did, we didn't, I was trying to think if we ended up talking to a chef at every single one and I, I'd, I'd have to ask my husband. I don't recall if we talked to a chef at Be Our Guest or not. I don't think we did, but our serve, well, maybe we did. We might have, I'm sorry. <laughs> they all run together when you've gone for a whole week and you're trying to remember all these places. This might be something Next time we take a trip or something, maybe I need to like video, but at the end of the day, you're gross. Like, I'm like, maybe I need to video at the end of the day and talk about, or I don't know. Anyway, we'll figure it out later. But be our guest, like my salad, I had, you know, a salad for my appetizer. It was basically just lettuce with tomatoes on it and whatever the, the, the dressing, the okay dressing was. There's, there's, unfortunately, ranch is my favorite and soy is in a lot of ranch too. So <laughs> go figure. But it was basically just, you know, like regular iceberg lettuce with tomatoes. It was nothing, you know, it was just totally normal. And then for my dessert, there was no dessert that I could have. 
so I ended up on the kids menu they have fruit and yogurt so I got a plate they gave me a they were you know they were very generous they gave me this big bowl of yogurt and then a bowl of like grapes and a few strawberries that I could dip in the yogurt so I mean that was good but when you love the gray stuff I don't know what's in the gray stuff but apparently I can't have the gray stuff it's delicious it is it is really good. We love the gray stuff there. So I was really sad that I could. I think maybe there's some chocolate in it is why. I think there's some soy in it. So next time, I don't know. I'm not sure how I'll manage that. But there, there's a whole bunch of them. There there was Pinocchio's has a gluten-free pizza. That was, that was, it was, a, it was tolerable. It was tolerable. Everybody knows Pinocchio's isn't very good. Good, but you know what when it's been a long day and you don't care and you just need to eat something it's it's fine um five minutes contempo cafe in the contemporary resort they had a gluten-free pizza it wasn't it wasn't bad either i'm i don't think it was the same as the one at pinocchio's but i could be wrong i don't know it was cooked better anyway and then Chef Mickey's, we, we'd never eaten there either. This, that was our first time. And it's like a family-style breakfast. So there's like waffles, pancakes, eggs, all the things. And Chef Mickey's was amazing. I got gluten-free waffles, y'all. So Mickey waffles, gluten-free, I could have them. They were so good. And I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, yay! So they have gluten-free waffles. So I imagine any of the restaurants that have waffles also have a gluten-free, but I'm not sure about that. I, I haven't tried that at many different ones yet, but they had gluten-free waffles. I got my own serving of the potato casserole and eggs, my own bowl of eggs and everything. So that that's just because of they will do things like that like when you say well, you can share with the family for other things they'll still bring you your own because they want to take care of make sure there's no cross contamination with me cross contamination isn't an issue some people are super sensitive and it is like they cannot so just to be safe they go ahead and bring you your own portion anyway just to, you know, just to make sure. Because they don't know. And you could tell them, but they don't want to be responsible if you have a reaction and have to go to the hospital, right? So, you know, they're they're covering their bases and you got to cover your bases too. But anyway, that was really awesome. So, and of course, of course, if you're wheat and soy free, you can still have the Dole Whip. Yes. I love the orange and vanilla swirled together. So good. And... The bantha milk, which is amazing. I love the blue bantha milk. I needed someday. I want to try the green again. We tried it like the first time, and we liked the blue better. But the blue, this the green is a citrusy one. The blue is a fruity one. And I had already drank some of the blue. And I think if you have the fruity one first and then drink the citrusy one, it makes it you know more sour or whatever. So maybe someday I'll try. I'm going to try the green again just to see, but blue is generally my favorite. Got to have it every time we go. So, overall, the experience eating wheat-free and soy-free, I was I was like, oh, how's this going to be? Because I've never had to do that. And there were a lot of things of my favorite things I couldn't have anymore. Can't have Cheshire Cattails anymore. We love the egg rolls in Magic Kingdom, the, the different kinds, the cheeseburger egg rolls. So good. Because of the egg roll wrapper. Can't have those anymore. There there are, you know, the desserts. Anything chocolate. There's tons of things. But, but. So there are a lot of the special treats and things that you can't have. Maybe some restaurants that you should just avoid. Just because. I was able to eat at Woody's Lunchbox too. They had, what was it? A gluten-free bread. I had a gluten-free grilled cheese. It was super thick sliced. Could have been thinner because it was just, yeah. But, hey, I was able to eat there. So, most places have an allergy-free, you know, an allergy-friendly menu. And if it's a table service place, they you can ask to talk to the chef. Sometimes they'll, don't, they won't even, they'll just bring them out standard. You can ask, and at any of the quick service places, obviously you're not talking to a chef and you're not, you know, getting served at the table, but you can ask, supposedly, I, I didn't have, I didn't do this, I just kind of managed on my own, but if you need to look, if you're, if you have a different allergy that's kind of odd, 
or not one of the big normal ones. The quick service places are all supposed to have, they have this binder, it's called the allergy binder, and you can ask to look at that, and it's got, you know, the pages, they show all the things and the ingredients, so you can check it as well at the, for the quick service places. The quick service places can't, you know, they have standard things they serve and that's it. So you just kind of have to, you know, they're not gonna, they don't have a chef out back that's gonna create you something, right? That's at the table service restaurants, but, which can get really expensive. So just be aware of that. But all of them, if you have the My Disney Experience, if you have the app, in the app, you can view the menu for all the places everywhere. So if you're trying to decide where you're going to eat and you're, and you're there and you're like, well, I can't have this and this, well, depending on what the allergy is, generally you can think, well, they have American food, so I can probably get this or that, you know, depending on the type of food. Like for me with soy, anything Asian, pretty much out. But you can work around it at certain places. Just check the menu. You can check it in the app or you can walk up and ask to see the allergy binder and someone can help you with that. Always, you know, in, in Disney, always, anytime, if the, you have a question, if there's something you just can't figure out or you're not sure where you can go or this or that, ask a cast member. You can ask any cast member anytime. Someone can help you. And it, honestly, it, it did change, you know, the trip for me a little bit, but like I said, I was more new at it. I didn't, I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to be everywhere, but it was still a really great trip. I still had some really great food and now I know, you know, different places I've heard as well. So we love going, we always go Rose and Crown in England in Epcot. And I heard that the fish, so I think Rose and Crown has it too, but the fish place that's actually on the, the quick service fish place that's right next to it on the walkway, supposedly they have, I think they're supposed, no, no, no. Is it them? I think they have gluten-free fish and chips, but I'm not sure. It was Raglan Road. That's what I was thinking of. Raglan Road in Disney Springs is supposed to have really great gluten-free fish and chips. So I'd like to try that sometime. I've actually never eaten at that one. Anyway, experience eating gluten-free, soy-free, it was, you know, it was up and down. There are good ones. There are ones that I'm like, eh, you know. But overall, it was really great. And it was just so nice that, that I had options a lot of places. I was just so happy to be able to, like, eat some real food and not have to eat like a rabbit the whole time. So... <laughs> if you're going to Disney anytime soon and you have allergies, just kind of take a breath and relax a little bit. It's going to be okay. They're really great about that. And it, it's a really allergy friendly place. It's for, for any kind of special kind of needs. Disney is really great about stuff like that. So, and when in doubt, ask a cast member. And I think that's it. I probably, I tried to keep it short, but let me... I mean, uh, oh, it's still very long. I'm sorry. And side note that I thought of after I'd already disconnected everything <laughs> was uh, one thing I did was I packed snacks that I knew I could have, like applesauce pouches, little, just a few little things like that I kept in my park bag just in case. And it came in real handy just different times of the day. If everybody's snacking on like the egg rolls or something else that you can't have, it's really handy to pack it just a few snacks just in case. Didn't use them every single day, but so there were times that it really came in handy to have something in my bag that I can have just in case I got hungry or they were snacking on something that I couldn't have, etc. Like, you know, when we first get when we first get home from Disney, I'm like, okay, I'm good, I'm good. We're worn out, but you know what? It only takes me like a couple of weeks. Like for a couple of weeks, I'm like, nope, I'm good. And then after a couple of weeks, I'm like, yeah, let's go back. I'm ready to go back. 
doesn't take long. 